Okay, we're recording. It's a lovely sunny day on the tour bus, the city tour. It's always sunny here, Aileen the tour guide says, but sometimes the sun is behind the clouds. She says this with a wry smile, utterly charming. And here we go. The statue coming into view is in Carrera marble. He has his lovely dog beside him, marvellously pretty. You have to be called Margaret to be a cleaner in the castle on the hill to the left. It's a rule they have there. Rich in tradition, this place, unquestionably. I'm sat here with my video camera recording it all for posterity. Or, I sometimes imagine, as part of some larger secretively unspecified knowledge gathering process. I have a fertile imagination. The English opium meter confessed there on the left. He admitted it was 15 quid for a dead body. Gosh. Alistair Sim, born in the cinema to the right, RG Cinema 2. Well, well. talks us through it all, yes indeed, in her brown fleece and dark brown glasses. She says we have to retrain ourselves to stop and look at the places we visit, but the bus keeps going. She's perverse like that. You can't have a cathedral without a bishop, she says. There's no bishop, but it's still a cathedral. Remarkable. I have dim recollections too, as I listen to alien stories. I've rambling around godforsaken towns, decks of cards and women's lives. Vague memories of an apprenticeship in an attic room in a city far from here. Writing jokes for crackers, or dedications for gravestones, or both. The pub on the corner on our right, Defoe used to drink there, Alien tells us. He was a secret agent for the Empire. That's why he became a writer. He learned to observe and report through spying, then got a taste for the treason of art. The train with its immaculate deception. A blue blazer was hanging outside this other pub. It's there to the right. But Percy Shelley never went inside. He could not. He was underage. If tears could build a stairway and memories create a lane, we would walk right up to heaven and bring him home again. Aileen sings a song to us as we go. Dim recollections impinge more and more often of some other time, some other life before the bus. Some memories are clearer to me than others and get clearer by the day. These recollections seem like songs that have been taped over on an audio tape. Songs that can start to become audible again as the tape degrades with age. Spirits of choruses screaming through the verses of the songs covering them, like the clashing discord of a congested radio dial. I remember pretty clear fragments, for example, of watching a tourist video on a TV set. A shaky camera is panning up and down spires. We see the fuzzy washed out winter colours, mausoleum greys, guard uniform blues. We hear the young man talking as he's filming, telling us about what we're looking at. He is videoing an old city not unlike this one, the capital of an empire, the Eastern Union of Republics, that we from the Western Economic Community, where I come from, were enemies with. The two empires had missiles pointed at each other so that fear contaminated the air of the whole world. The man with the video camera was allowed to be there because he'd been invited to a youth conference to promote peace between young people in our empire and theirs. The WEC was not at war with the EUR, they were just irreconcilable enemies. So the fellows going round this place in the EUR, on a tour bus I think, telling us about the sights, Mostly jagged mountain brown government buildings, sullenly brooding in the grey winter light. The camera pans down into some public gardens below a dark castle right at the heart of the city and zooms in on the craggy face of the volcanic rock the castle's built on. 
suddenly the man behind the lens says, an extraordinary business. There's an aeroplane, it's landed. And sure enough, a little bright white Cessna's flying around the shadowed public gardens, slight as brand new polystyrene on an endless grey-green sea. It lands near the bandstand at the west end of the gardens, and everyone rushes over to see who it is. It turns out to be a chap from the WEC, saying he wants to promote peace and understanding. He says he's just a man with a plane, not a spy, just a man on his own. And the people of the capital of the EU are, have hardly seen any foreign people. So they ask him what it's like to live in the WEC. The man's eyebrows nervously rise as he looks around the gathered crowd, his tongue pushing out his bottom lip like a child in thought. What's green and can fly? A cucumber in a Cessna, the pilot says. Want to hire a Cessna? Standard on some brick. Will you be able to fly away free? One woman asks him. But then the EUR soldiers arrive and take the chap away, because obviously he's not allowed to fly his plane from the WEC all the way into the heart of the capital of the EUR. Why is 6 scared of 7? The pilot asks the soldiers with fear in his voice as he is dragged away. Because 7, 8, 9! To the world he was but one, to us who was now the world, a bystander said. And some of the soldiers then see the man with the video camera on the bus. They start shouting at him and running over to the vehicle. Because, of course, he's not allowed to film things like the fellow flying his plane all the way into the heart of the capital of their empire. The soldiers storm the tour bus and take his camera off him and then probably destroy his video tape. He and his prime was called about. That's all I remember, but it's as clear as a spring morning. and round on the tour bus, the same route, always the same, nothing different. It's all lovely though, of course, always sunny, always beautiful. I don't get on or off, I've never been on or off, not that I can remember, and I would remember that. I record and re-record over the same tape again and again, but it's always the same footage in every last detail, the tour never changes one tiny bit. A modicum of variety would ameliorate any numb and monotony. If there were any monotony, I'm not saying there is. Variety wouldn't be a problem, is all I'm saying. Being able to get off the bus, one could say that this would be some variety. This is a for instance. And sometimes, as yet another tour winds its way round, I think of the man who threw the plane into that tourist video. I think of the fear on his face. And sometimes I think that maybe that chap with the video camera was me. Maybe I never saw the video on TV or anywhere else. Maybe I was the one behind the camera. That's how I can remember it all so clearly. And then I think that this, me being on this bus, this is my punishment for being there, the video on it all. My punishment for being a spy. I could have been slapped about so much by the soldiers when they stole the bus that I fell into a coma. And my dream in my coma is of the tourist bus endlessly going round this capital city, which is probably the capital of the EU now, going by that massive castle over there. My coma dream looping forever, like an Elisa's drum machine, until the power is turned off. But then I realise that's all rather silly. Silly. How can you know if you're in a dream? Only at the moment of waking, I would guess. Am I about to wake up? No, still here. And I point the camera at Aileen, and she sings her song, and we go round and round. Thoughts return to scenes long past, years roll on but memories last. In a way, I'd like it to be true, that I was, that I am, a spy. Turning over secrets, that's what I want to be doing, so we can find any. Smuggling them through borders in the dark, bringing them all back home to a hero's welcome. Then wondering who will play me in the film. The souls of the dead hold the place where they die, the alien says. As she points over at the display boards for the walking ghost stars. The souls carry on 
Splintering out at us from the ever blazing sun. Another plane to video. Then there would be more soldiers to take me away to somewhere else. Rest after weariness. Sweet rest at last. 